themselves. And they are ready to share that with everybody. And I'm just so thankful for every face that's in here right now. I'm so proud of these kids. So you reach off the backs of my people. We still make a minimum wage. Is that equal? Mm. Y'all love the stream that we all got a chance. But what they learn is way more advanced. And they don't even give people who look like me a chance. Mm. I'm not out on the street or rapping on the beat, walking on the feature that was boxed in for me. But... I'm just a black woman, right? I don't mean any disrespect, I respect you. I cherish you, you're the light on my life. The apple on my eye, you're fragile, obedient. You're my possession, you're my trophy, my personal property. But respectfully, respect it's just how I talk. Everybody, you welcome to Political Experience. We got episode 215. My man Khalil. We got some great, 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 great uh talks off camera. We're gonna bring it on camera for y'all. So y'all stay tuned. Media like mm -hmm. that instant gratification thing where you can't post a poem and you might go viral with it and things like that. But I think there there's a different um grace, there's a different um I won't say purpose, there's a different value system that yeah. you have when you've gone through the work of working on your craft, mm -hmm. working on your delivery, working on your memory, working on how to cultivate that with and for other people mm -hmm. over time. And so that's really what I really enjoy about the work of it. And um, I'll probably stitch it. I'll send it to you to, to yeah, stitch it. No, but there's sure. this, a friend of mine, um, shout out Kayla. She also, Soleil, she a crazy poet. She mm. down in Atlanta right now, but she just featured with me at uh, Broken English. And... You got dope names, by the way, bro. As, as you talk about these plays, I'm like, man, you got to <laughs> give them the poets. They are very creative with their words. Though. Yeah. Like, bro, bro, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shout out Broken English. Like, that, it's it's a great platform, man. Shout out to, to Leroy. Shout out to atlas to both christians to trip like y'all y'all the fam down mm. man i appreciate y'all so much but um yeah so she just sent me some videos of like 2017 when mm. i was performing and like uh, we used to do these like uh cyphers and there'd be like seven eight poets and we mm. drop ten dollars and whoever wins take all of it and for a college kid <laughs> hey $80, i can take eighty dollars <laughs> so <laughs> it was it was that type of stuff yeah. that was like I really appreciated those moments in my college days because yeah. now as a full-time artist, I can use those moments to say, Psh, let's let's throw something up. Let's, yeah. let's get into it. Mm. And it's kind of like, again, I go back to that grit of, I think my art the best. What do you think about yours? <laughs> and that's what, that's what I really that's dope, though. enjoy about poetry. But being able to see my old self in those moments, mm -hmm. like, dang, I remember when I wrote that poem. I remember yeah. why I wrote it. So. Yeah, it's it's a value system that come with seeing your progress over time rather than just that quick little oh people know me now. It, it's yeah. it's it the value of it is different. That's the best thing I can say. Yeah. So I, I this is the question I have for Lacey that I want to ask you because a lot of people don't understand the business behind being an artist, behind being a poet. Right? I wanna talk about that because people I remember Lacey got assaulted <laughs> but I was saying like what it's not a mess when people think about starving artists, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I'm not sure if, if if people think when they think about poetry or being a poet, mm -hmm. that there being money to be made behind it. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Aspect, okay, though, for bro. sure. So when it comes to the business of poetry, so I'll tell y'all how I, I started. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. That's, 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 that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> when I started The Sparrow's Fortune, I started The Sparrow's Fortune mainly because I've always wanted to collaborate with yeah. other artists. I think it's valuable Come on now. Um, That's to to see what somebody else is doing and how can I compliment that yeah. or or know that what I like I'm good is just cuz right. but when I got mixed rows next to me, when I got Morgan Page, when I got Avery mm. Lamar Pope, when I got Cuna Stu. So all my homies Cuna Stu, <laughs> Quiet Kid, Ray McKell. Shout out to this bros for you, man, but I knew that I was good by myself, but what about when we all in the room together? Mm. Um, and so being on the open mic scene, I've seen so many different artists 
be great at what they do. And it's like, how can we elevate this? How can yeah. we do this a little bit more? And so being on the open mic scene and on the slam scene, I started to also see a lot of business people who weren't artists take advantage of artists to where oh, I got wow. this venue. I got this venue. I need to bring some extra bread in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have an open mic. I'm going to have a slam and, and wax poets to, to come mm -hmm. in and do their thing. And I think that I I was kind of, I've always been rebellious in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> and so with that, I'm like, bruh, how come artists don't got control over that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why not create wow. a space where artists can can have a platform in a for us, by us type of fashion, mm -hmm. for real? And that's that's another reason why I really admire what Morgan, Morgan did and, and Tom when they created Poetry Unplugged, because it was like, they wanted a space for poets to to be limitless mm -hmm. and and to have the ability to share their art without being um, overblown by the DJ, without being mm -hmm. overblown by the loud people at the bar. Wow. You know what I mean? And I think that's important. And that's why that it's is important. Unplugged I don't think about that. Yeah. Because it's like we're not trying to be seen in, in mm -hmm. inside the bars and things like that because it kind of takes away from like keep it pure. Keep it pure. Keep yeah. the poetry that's dope. pure. Keep the artist hearable you know yeah, what i mean right, like right. you're going you like to fight for the music is time, going no that, that, that's mean? good that's good and granted like there is you can argue that that kind of creates your um that kind of creates your ability to gauge crowd attention and yeah. things like that but when you're a new poet you just want to be heard for mm. real you know what i mean when you're somebody who care about your work yeah you just want to be heard and you shouldn't have to fight over that so right. shout out to poetry unplugged um but I seen that that happening mm -hmm. when I first came to Cleveland on the open mic and slam scene, and I was like, "No, nah, we got to do something a little yeah. different." I, I want to do something mm -hmm. a little different, and so the business aspect of it, it's a lot of paperwork for one. Mm -hmm. People don't know how much paperwork go into business things. Yeah. It's a lot of it, and being able to really understand, like the LOC niggas, like on Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> it's a lot of them, bro, and they. Like you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta get your tax right on <laughs> there. It's it's <laughs> it's a lot of paperwork yeah. that come with those things. It's not just no quick little quick hustle. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people think when it comes to business. Oh, it's a quick little hustle. I'm gonna get yeah. this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna flip that. Like it's gonna be a slow grind for real, for mm -hmm. real. But again, go back to that value over time when you see something at its beginning, because at the beginning this girl's fortune was really it was five of us at the time we wanted to create our own platform mm -hmm. and, and do it with grace and so being able to to maximize that it was like a great show we had a great first show on june 4th back in 2022 mm -hmm. and from that being able to see how all of our skills progress like as iron shoppers iron that's how like we should sharpen mm -hmm. our friends for real and i've i've seen that happen like with, with the homies for mm -hmm. real and so being able to learn about getting venue spaces, mm -hmm. being able to learn about taking on websites, being able to learn about the taxes that you got to make sure you pay mm -hmm. after you get your checks coming in and things like that. Being able to learn about those things, it was a humbling experience yeah. as an artist because, you know, again, if you want to be the boss, you got to learn about the the venues. They still got to pay, yeah. pay for stuff for real. Yeah, it's over and, here. Yeah, it's that overhead cost. And so being able to understand those things as an artist, it kind of also helped me when it came to negotiating prices. When it came to mm. when people reached out to me and wanted me to work with them, it's like, no, nah, you say that you want to pay me this, but what about this this aspect mm -hmm. of like what about my writer and and all of these things all these other factors all these other factors mm -hmm. because i need videography and i need somebody to take that video for me mm -hmm. or if you're taking videography i need you to put this and rewrite the contract to where i also have rights to use those mm -hmm. things and as artists like we don't think about those things where like wow i didn't even think about those things yeah like wow. when when somebody asks you to come and perform somewhere and there are some contracts that like they get all rights and there's there's nothing wow that you can do about that right. but you like signed up on it because you signed off on it already mm -hmm. you know what i mean wow. so being able to have those types of things and professional quality video because mm -hmm. we in the content is king right now That's so nice. being able to have professional quality video all of that were things on the back end as an artist i had to learn 
first for the Sparrows to make mm. sure that my team was taken care of, but also, again, for me as an individual to be able to say, you know what? I need some quality video. You know yeah. what I mean? I need some quality pictures. And so being able to learn about that over time has definitely helped me grow and develop so much more as an individual, but also as a as a leader in, in the realm of poetry as far as the Sparrows Fortune and as far as the um, Poetry Unplugged. And I'll also say, specifically with business, allowing your business to grow and flourish on its own. Mm -hmm. Like uh, as an artist, I feel like anything we create has a life of its own after we finish it. <laughs> and so like, when I think about the books that we re that we released, it's kind of like, once you let it go, it's, it's, out it's, it's out there. Yeah. It's like a artist with albums. Like mm. you can't tell if it's gonna flop or not, bro. Like <laughs> you, you just gotta I, let I it live. About that. Wow. Like, and and even perfect example, all the rap beef going on. It's mm. like, is Kendrick albums flops? No, it's up to the it's up to the uh, it's subjective for real, yeah. for real, right? Same thing with Drake and Cole and anybody else who was in the rap beef, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it's about who that artist is, yeah, but. What does this piece of art say about you? Yeah. And I think businesses are pieces of art that mm. that we don't really get to experience. And so with the Sparrows, it was first we was just five artists putting together mm. spoken word showcases. And I was doing creative writing workshops on my own for a while. I was working at this place. Um, shout out DCNEO, the Diversity Center of Northeast mm. Ohio. Um, and I was doing... Um, programs based on you know social emotional learning mm -hmm. teaching students about identity teaching students about you know um, social justice equity diversity and inclusion mm. and so i also started doing creative writing workshops on my own mm. through just cuz and i was talking to morgan one day and morgan like how come you don't just do it under the sparrows and like we can both do the workshops and i was like you're real smart mm. you real smart for real so that's what we started doing yeah. toward um the end of 2022 into 2023 mm -hmm. and so that is actually what expanded us so much further because i don't think i think morgan knew it and i didn't necessarily know mm -hmm. it but you see the potential one and she see how far yeah she going. she saw it for That's real right. and i appreciate shout that about morgan. morgan shout out to mo shout <laughs> out to mo man um i appreciate morgan because she sees stuff for real, she mm -hmm. sees stuff before I do a lot of the time. Most, what most women do. Most women do. Most women <laughs> so do. Shout out to the team. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, <laughs> y'all, so many women on the on the team. You right because they they got they yeah. see it before I do. No facts. <laughs> and so the it was the writing workshops that I didn't know how many people actually needed that for mm. real. And so we were able to expand and like we work in after school programs inside of schools, yeah. but we also work with a lot of adults who are previously incarcerated mm. um, and enrolled in addiction recovery services. Yeah. So being able to then again, going back to the paperwork and, and using my degree, back to using my actual degree, <laughs> mm. um, being able to use that understanding of family intervention, being able to understand- What did you, you get a degree in? Human development and oh, family no. studies. That's so it's kind of like a oh, mixture of- Social work, You're the two. yeah, mm -hmm. social work, psychology, and sociology, and education kind of like mm -hmm. packed into one. And um, I like my focus was youth development programming. Mm -hmm. So being able to understand how young people think, being yeah. able to understand how young people minds alter over time, and how families play a role in that. So mm -hmm. being in single parent households, how that impact your education off rip because. You know, your parent might not be around to be able to help you with homework. Mm -hmm. So that means you need tutoring. Can they get you to tutoring? Can somebody come to tutor you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Those types of things. And so that those writing workshops kind of help with that because yeah. our workshops really dive into social emotional learning, that self-management. Mm -hmm. How do you manage yourself after a long day? Let's go journal. Mm -hmm. How do you process your emotions after you and your friends so had an argument? Let's go write a poem about mm -hmm. it or write a short story about it. Those types of things. That's, that's really what we focus on. And also recognizing that as much as kids need it, adults need it too. Yeah. Because if you are enrolled in addiction recovery services, obviously there's something that's paining you or ailing you to where you need to work those types of things mm -hmm. out. And by no means would I say that writing itself is therapy alone, but I will say that writing helped me through the, the mm. worst moments and situations throughout my life. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, man, that's that's the blessing of 
just allowing the sparrows to to grow on its own for mm-hmm. real is the fact that like and also being able to listen to your friends listen yeah. to your people for real because if i want to listen to morgan we'll just be doing shows yeah, you know, yeah, you know yeah. what i mean and i'll be selfishly doing workshops on my mm. own and i don't think i would have seen the fruit that that that's so good that was produced from that for real so that's good yeah man yeah that that's developed so much so let me ask you this do you feel like knowing of the, the business end of, of it all has made you a better artist or how you feel like it might have diluted some of the art Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's a really good question. All right, listen, I try. I you, try. You, this is why you're a podcast, <laughs> I try. I try. Because so, uh, I, I, I've always wondered that. Because I wonder, because like, I remember when Jay-Z became uh, president of, uh, of yeah. Def Jam and whatnot. Mm-hmm. People was like, oh, he ain't rapping no more. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I feel like he made him a better rapper. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He know the business part of it all. Yeah. He can help out, you know what I'm saying, artists and whatnot. And I feel like his rap got better after that. So, but people, you know, fans of opinions and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I wonder the same thing for you and whatnot. Absolutely. I think, I think it's both. Honestly. Mm. And I say that because the business stuff, it definitely softened my heart for a lot of artists for real. Wow. Because it's like, it's so easy to be exploited, bro. Yeah. Like you don't realize it until you on the other the end, end and them. see like, oh, they were getting people, they they was getting them for Ooh. real, for real. Like, and also like teaching artists to value their work, like through poetry unplugged, like our I don't want to, we don't want to feature an artist unless we can pay them. Like, mm, I think that's really on. important for, for artists because yeah. we want to make sure you get paid, bro. Like, yeah. it's a lot of people out here doing features for free. And granted, I will say, coming up in poetry, I did a lot of free features. Yeah. That's, that's pay, paying your respect. Right, that's pay your sharpening debt. your tools. There we go. You're doing a lot of those moments. And so, by all means, it's definitely going to be some free features. But for us at Poetry Unplugged, we want to make sure that we are raising the bar. We are mm. elevating the artists. We are like tightening those screws. Yeah. And like, it's a lot of artists who don't know what invoices are. It's mm. a lot of artists that don't know what contracts are. So yeah. those are moments where, okay, now I'm going to teach you, like, here's what an invoice looks like. Mm. I need you to invoice us so that way we can pay you wow. this out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's those types of things that are really important. And I'm thankful that we were able to do that. Shout out to y'all, man. Blood, for real. Um, so there's that aspect that really softened my heart for other artists. Mm-hmm. For me as an artist, I can say that it has definitely, I won't say diluted in the aspect of like made me like not a good artist, but it's definitely dwindled how much I mm-hmm. show up as an artist for real. Cause you think of a business. I'm always, I'm always <laughs> at exact. Like I, yeah. I was watching, um, wow. like Dreamville, uh, Revenge of the Dreamers 3. Cole, Cole was talking about like they had like this 10 day they locked in the studio for 10 days mm. and Cole was like for the first three days like I couldn't perform like, I couldn't really write or nothing because mm. I had my exec hat on like, I'm just... right now I feel blessed uh, from the moment I walked in the door I heard Mr. Wheaton and, and congratulations and everything now all the way up to upstairs same thing man it's a blessing I am feeling really grateful very blessed um, it's just an amazing experience to be able to be in the room with so many amazing people and people that are game changers and world changers that's you know breaking bread and ma- making businesses in Cleveland Ohio this is a night like for one for the books for not only Cleveland but Ohio I'm so proud of Tenor. Y'all are just good. Y'all producers good. Like it's food yeah, here. Yeah, we got yeah, drinks yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Make sure everybody's the safe. St- the stuff that people don't understand when we think of from executive the executive back end. Wow. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And so he was like, I couldn't really show up as an artist until day four or five. So like, is that's the difficulty sometimes? Where like, perfect example, we got a show that we put in up, but I can't really pour into it as an artist because. I gotta make sure the venue pay. I gotta make sure mm. the DJs pay. I gotta make sure that the artist is taken care of mm. as far as what they need. Like, is you okay? How your mental going? You are you cool to show up in this space yeah. right now? Like, 
So all of those types of things jumbled into one makes it a little bit more difficult to show up for me as an artist. Mm. I can say though, like it's definitely sharpened my skills because now when I'm the cool thing about it is when I'm not writing, I'm studying now. So mm. it's like I might not have the mental capacity to write stuff out, but I'm I do want to be able to take stuff in and that has made me a lot more tactful with what i write Mm -hmm. um i think in i think in project basis now so Mm -hmm. like i really i really care about how how does this poem fit into a project into a book into a, a show into a documentary like how does this work how can i take this one piece and put it into a bigger picture for mm. real and so that's where business has really helped me yeah um it's helped me as a as a writer because like i got this one poem where i'm explaining like what i say i say something like y'all think that like there's there's middlemen to this for real for mm. real you get your check but like for one you got your taxes then you got all these other people to pay in between that mm-hmm. then you get your bit and then after that is you going to use that to pay something else that you really want or you're going to put it back into your craft mm. and so within that poem i'm able to really dive into that and so yeah i think i don't know i can't i can't call it i will say that either way it's helped me grow it's helped me grow the artist. that's dope yeah. I, I feel like this is a little twin tool it's in, 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 in your tool belt now. yeah absolutely you know absolutely absolutely so i gotta ask you because i'm pretty sure someone will be like what is just called how did you how did that name come about you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying like I'm going to dive in that, bro, because I think I, I believe the story got to be good. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. Y'all don't tell nobody this. <laughs> so, I used to be tagging. Like, I like I like tagging. Okay, okay, all right. <laughs> well, explain the tagging. So, I'm like, what the hell are we talking so about? So, tagging, tagging is like spray paint on mm. buildings and stuff like that. And yeah. honestly, like, I was mad amateur at it. Like, I wasn't no graffiti artist or nothing like mm. that. But one night, I was with my, I was with my bro, and he was like, you trying to go tag? I'm like, say less. I'll, say, I'll try it. I'll yeah. try it. So like, we just spray paint stuff, like making like funny symbols and stuff mm. like that. But one day I was by myself, and I'm like, bro, what would be some cool stuff? Like, if I needed to leave my mark on the world, like, mm. what would that? What would it be? What would that look like for you? Yeah. And I don't think it was necessarily for me to tag at that time, but yeah. like, like I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in like God and Christ, and yeah, so on, to, I felt like the Spirit just came to me and was like, "Just cause," mm. and I got and I'm riding my bike. I'm riding my bike thinking about this, and just cause it stands for like just a collection of seeds. Like if I mm. if I look at myself as a tree, that if I want to if I want to be a tree. <laughs> And you think about a tree in the middle of a garden, right? Uh-huh. Like it got fruit that's on it. It's dropping fruits and seeds. Mm-hmm. Like it's a place for the birds and, and the squirrels and, and all of the animals to yeah. find shade, find food, find sustenance. Mm-hmm. Like, and when it drops seeds, those also are other trees that's gonna be around it for real, for real. And so if I look at myself as a tree, that's then so a tree itself is a collection of seeds. Mm-hmm. And so as the seeds fall, like again, they, they produce more fruit for mm-hmm. real, for real. And when you think about words, words are seeds for mm-hmm. real. Like they can be That's dope, bro. Once once you say something, it plant into your mind, into your yeah. heart, into your bloodstream, and that produces something inside of you later mm-hmm. down the line for real. So that's the main basis of just cause mm-hmm. it's just a collection of seeds. Like cause you also it's it just cause. Just cause, you know what I mean? It's and, and that's what that's what I was gonna say. So it's really like a triple quadruple entendre because it's like just cause you, you kids Lamar with it all. Yeah, 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 just a little bit. <laughs> so it's like just a collection of seeds. Like I'm just a collection of seeds. But yeah. I'm, not, I'm not that important, like because I also need to not be too big headed mm. about the things that we do because when people see your face all the time or mm. or like you in front of people all the time, it can be it could boost your pride. Like, maybe mm-hmm. I really am that nigga. You know what I mean? Like, so you got to be mindful of that. So it kind of keeps me humble. But then it's like, the word just itself is like, it means immovable. It means incorruptible. So it's like an incorruptible collection of seeds. And like that, once I like, I we said, hey, down. this is crazy. But that's like, I was watching this one thing. I think the name itself is like a God thought. Like mm. He said, it's some things in life 
or thoughts that are like given to us yeah they're just so inexplicable and just because it's one of those things that came to me it was like bro it's so many things because then sometimes i do things just because just because i want to yeah. right? just because i can and then there's things i say or do for a just cause because it's like mm. it's important for us to show up so yeah. it's like all of that is wrapped into right there, just okay. so, you said the yeah. quadruple <laughs> no, that's dope. I got, I, I got, I got my, my, my monitor. I got, I got work on mine. I got, I got to put some more meetings to that joint. That's what's up, though. That's dope, bro. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely thankful for that name. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, listen, you gotta make sure you listen to man. Facts. So, okay. Yeah. So we talk about the past. Talk about the present. Talk about the future, bro. What does the future hold for you, man? Um, what does the future hold? The future is is endless. Mm. Is 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 endless, man. I think that um. I know for a fact the sparrows is is going to get to a place where it's basically running itself mm. like to where i i know that i'm working on a couple of documentaries right now so mm. i'm excited for that i'm that's working good. on a play right now so i'm excited for that um <clears throat> that's me as an individual yeah. so like be me being able to see like how those things play a role in the other things that we, we mm. work on for real so um, I'm really into artist development. So yeah. being able to help other artists learn more business skills. Mm. Um, so you would like, like not measure per se, but be in development of other artists. Absolutely. That's absolutely. Dope, yeah, absolutely. That's dope. Um, managing, I, I don't think I can be a manager for real. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely help you like with well, your well, artist development is a real job. Yeah, That's you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So definitely consulting in that realm. Um, I would say with the Sparrow specifically, we I want to build the company out to to a good team of like seven, eight, eight people mm. who are teaching artists who who can also understand the importance of putting on a show and, and producing those types of mm. things. So um, definitely always putting on shows. I think that um, there's definitely a caliber of artistry that that comes with the Sparrow. So I appreciate yeah. each and every one of the artists that that work with me, man. I appreciate all of y'all. Um, and then, yeah, again, being able to just expand what our writing workshops look like. Yeah. So really diving further into that, um, that, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I told y'all for a word. Hey, no, no, listen, no. You gotta, <laughs> hey, well, I don't know, uh, y'all might see it because I've been here. I'm like, this bro, I think he, 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 he does poetry without even knowing it or whatnot. Give me this bed. I'm like, dang, like, I'm like, that's good stuff right there. So don't, don't, don't show yourself short, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But really just being able to dive into the, the value that we put into the workshop. Yeah. That's really what I'm trying to say. Um, and then for, again, Poetry Unplugged, really just expanding that platform. Again, really helping artists develop there, um, specifically as professional artists. Mm. Like, what does it look like for you to be a professional artist and coming on to um, the Poetry Pl Unplugged stage? So I'm very excited about what we're doing with that. Um, and then again, like me as an individual, being able to just expand my art form, I really like documentation. Like, yeah. Shout out to Cody. Um, my dude, Cody, Kenneth Cody, he was telling me, we was um, at lounges one day doing something for Lacey, actually. We okay. was, we, Lacey had a, a city so thing. So lounges, yeah, man. shout out to lounges, shout out to AD. Um, we had a, uh, it was a sipping paint, and I was there just painting and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Cody, and he was just showing me like all of these videos. He was like, Brad, this is history. Mm -hmm. This is history being made right now in this moment. Yeah. And that was so real to me. Because yeah. it's like, um, on some like, Crazy stuff, y'all know. Um, uh, paid in full, where like they getting out the car and they snapping pictures and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like these is is neighborhood superstars for real. Mm -hmm. but, but later down the line, it's like we was at a uh, unveiling of the the statue that Lacey had worked on mm -hmm. like a while ago, and it was that moment because it was with uh, Lewis and Carl Stokes and. and uh, the cabs was there, everything like that. Mm -hmm. And ultimately it was something beautiful because these was people who was just Brandon from the pull-up experience. Mm -hmm. These are people who was just Khalil or just hey, listen, us from, hey, listen, from like the Sparrow. We, we make history, you know what I mean? <laughs> and once you started to see things like that, see things from that perspective, yeah. you start to value each other a little bit differently. You start to value the the spaces you in a lot mm -hmm. differently. 
Um, because these are ultimately like monuments that we in the middle of creating mm-hmm. right now. So that's where a lot of my work has been shifting towards. So being able to take pictures and document these moments over time has been like really important to me. For real. So, so when you're telling me we we're waiting for the just uh, just cause. Uh, the Sparrow's Fortune documentary coming out 2025, you're telling me it's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Not that necessarily. <laughs> okay, okay. But, but um, I will also would say shout out to Ghetto Therapy, shout out to, shout to, to Walt, Walt, man. Because um, we are in the middle of working on a documentary. Get um, out of here. Titled okay. Healing in the Hood. And mm. it's like a multi series of uh, like just being able to see organizations specifically like ghetto therapy mm-hmm. who are doing the healing work of people yeah. in the hood for real, for real. Cause growing up in Chicago, like growing up on the West side, I seen a lot of things that an eight, nine, 10 year old probably shouldn't mm-hmm. see, you know what I mean? Or, or experience. And so being able to highlight the people in the Cleveland area yeah. who are, who are making those efforts. It's really important. So that's that's one of the documentaries we we working on right that's now. Dope. So hey, I can't wait for that. that. That's gonna be dope, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, shot, and shot, shot, and this and this. I said this on the podcast all the time. I feel like because I know you know what I'm saying you don't. I don't know if you know, but Cleveland has a I used to have a terrible stigma of non collaboration, mm. right? Uh, but I feel like after the pandemic, like it Thanos snapped and reset everything and whatnot. Because mm. now. You see collaborations. That's mm-hmm. why I met you. I met you yeah, collaborating. You know? Yeah, through collaborating. Yeah, shout out to saying? creative meetup. Shout yeah, yeah, shout out to the gang. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I still like to say is that we are. It's finally like said where you're doing something over there. You're doing something over there. Mm-hmm. Let's collaborate on this and whatnot. Let's bring absolutely. Our, let's let's avenge this thing and come together and whatnot. So no, I love. I feel like Cleveland is in the renaissance in itself and mm-hmm. whatnot. Where all these creatives, whether you do post shows or whether you make podcasts, whether you Whatever it is you do, we can come together and we can come to do something great. Absolutely. So no. Absolutely. Yeah. Shout out to everybody, everybody who ever worked with me, bro. Yeah, everybody who bro. reached out to work with me. I appreciate y'all because I grow, y'all grow, y'all grow, I grow. Um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that y'all seen value in me, mm. that y'all accepted me seeing value in y'all, um, and that we've been able to grow as far as we have and to much more growth down the line, man. I on, appreciate man. y'all for sure. That's dope. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna move to our second questions or whatnot. Okay. And I gotta tell this one a little bit different because you're from Chicago or whatnot. But <laughs> um and 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 I did give us a problem, but I I know that still the stigma is still there is that Cleveland is not a cloud, not it's not a very cloudy city. Mm-hmm. And what you being from out of the city, I guess this this is gonna be a great one because do you feel that? Do you feel like Cleveland is not a cloud place? So I'll say this. I did not feel that for a really long time. Mm. Like, I, cause when I was coming to Cleveland, people were like, you want to go to Cleveland? Like everybody <laughs> clicky up there. Like mm. that's why I heard a lot of yeah. it. But being here, it was a lot of love. Like yeah. the moment I touched down in Cleveland, it was, it was Tired of carrying that load. Drop the house. Gutter Properties will buy your house as is with offers up to $300,000. Need serious repairs, liens, taxes, or judgments? We'll work through your unique situation to get that house off your back. During your free no obligation appraisal, we maintain social distancing and take every precaution to ensure your experience is safe. Drop the house. Gutter Properties. Call us or visit gutterproperties.com. But I was just having a conversation uh, we was at the Midtown Tech Hive doing third Friday pull up like mm-hmm. last month. And somebody was like, you know, it's interesting though, because Cleveland love outsiders though. Like wow. if you're an outsider, they're going to rock with you. Yeah. But their own people, Cleveland don't, don't people. rock with wow. each other. And I was like, you know, that's actually an interesting point. Wow. That's an interesting point. And I think I can honestly say within the last maybe six or seven months, I'm starting to peep through the holes of like, it. oh, okay, I understand. Mm. So it's like, I'm thankful again for all of the people I've been able to collaborate and yeah. work with because there's a shared wow. love, a shared bonding of, of the value mm. or um, desired goals and accomplishments that we want to see. Mm. And we don't let, you know, being clicky or, or trying to be the clout chasers get yeah. in the way of, you know, handling the business at hand or, or doing the artist work at hand. Mm. And so I'm appreciative for everybody who I've collaborated with. Um, but, um, for the most part, I would say no. Nah, Cleveland, Cleveland, not like that. Yeah. But I can see the the pitfalls see, where yeah. it can be. You I know? see. Yeah. So, and uh, that's that. That's an interesting take on it because uh, I didn't. I ain't. I, I'm not. Until you just said this now, I can see that. I see. Mm-hmm. I, I see it. But that's what I love about our platform. And I'll be biased. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> it be I'm, like that. It be like that. No, no, no. I feel like we're disruptive because we have had everybody. Whatever clip that you brought, I don't care who clip you mm-hmm. with. 
come on to the public experience, tell your story. That's about right. it. Because uh, at the end of the day, Cleveland, Cleveland is a small, big town. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's because everybody know everybody. Everybody knows everybody. Know who everybody is <laughs> on their lowest of keys. Yeah. yeah, I've definitely realized that. Yeah. For sure. And we got to disrupt that, man, because regardless of that, like, it's no reason why we can't work together. Mm. Shout out to Johnny over at WIC Works, man. He is bringing Cleveland. He's bringing Hollywood to Cleveland and whatnot. Mm. And I said because I almost let me not say that on the pod. It was like people will say, "Don't have so and so in your pocket." I'm like, "What? That don't make no sense." Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have whoever I want first of all, but second of all, I I, I don't take I take a grain of thought a grain of salt when someone tell me something about somebody because mm-hmm. I want to be able a chance to meet that person for myself yeah. and hear their story, get a chance to meet them for myself. And we have so many great people who've been on this podcast. And once again, if if I took that whole notion like, no, you rock with so and so over there, yeah, I'm taking, I took it a grain of salt. But I didn't think about the whole out of town thing. Mm, I think that could be like we argue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let me ask you this next question: mm-hmm. Who would you like to collaborate in the future, though, bro? Who do I want to collaborate with in the future? I want to collaborate with um, the Cleveland Museum of Art. That's that's what I want. Mm. I want it. So CMA, if y'all hear this, if y'all, see I know me. you watching the Cleveland Museum of Art. Come, my man come, up. come kick it, man. We got <laughs> we got a lot of great things. I want to yeah. work with the Cleveland Museum of Art. Um, Kanye, hit him up too, man. Oh yeah, Kanye, <laughs> Kanye, come on, G. Come, come on, man. man. I know you watch Kanye. On, <laughs> come on, man. Um, definitely uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, I want to work with y'all for that's sure. Right. Um, that's Cleveland specific. If I could, if I could, say, I must think I'd be good because I, I know our 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 yeah our yeah the out. reach. That's what I was gonna say. If I could work with with anybody. I want to work with Saba. Saba, for sure. Mm. Saba, that's dope. Artist. Yeah, that's Saba dope. and No Name, for sure. Um, I want to, I really want to work with La Russell. Like, mm. I really man, like, listen, hey, if you ain't hit the La Russell, you tripping. Yeah, you know, yeah, man. yeah. He He's crazy, dope. crazy, crazy dope <laughs> artist. Um, I'm thankful to have been able to like share a platform with like Talam AC. Mm. Um, like, he's an excellent, excellent artist. I would want to work with Aja Monet. She, she's an excellent, excellent, beautiful artist. I really appreciate mm. her work. Um, for for the sake of Morgan, I want to work with Sonny Patterson. <laughs> I want to work with Sonny Patterson. Um, on the dark side, I would love to work with uh, um, Jordan Peele. Uh, mm. Like just to just That's to dope. honestly, bro, we don't gotta work together. But can I like sit in the room <laughs> and just watch that process? You. <laughs> like no, for real, like shadow that process. Bro, yeah, that's dope, bro. Um, no. And it's so crazy because Jordan Phil, I remember when he used to be on Mad TV. I know y'all might not remember, but he went from being a comedian to now he's making whole feature movies, mm-hmm. man. And that's so crazy yeah. transition and the growth from that. I'm glad you said comedian. I would want to work, I really would like to work with Ali Sadiq. Oh, come Ali on. Ali Sadiq is an excellent like comedian. He has a great storyteller, though. Yeah, excellent storyteller. Yeah. Excellent storyteller. Ali, tap in with me for sure, for sure. Come show. on, man. And you know, I love that question because I know. Two, three, four years from now, I'm gonna watch the episode. I'm like, man, Cleo, he, he said that. Now, for sure. you know, what I'm saying? that's why I love, that's why I love the question. You know sure. what I'm yeah, that's bro, real. That's I love that real. question, bro. Yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Definitely, this, this is one of the most important questions. Legacy, bro. Mm-hmm. This is something that I feel like us as creators, innovators, and entrepreneurs don't think enough of. Mm-hmm. Legacy won't we'll leave behind because we're we're in the moment. We're we're in the motion. We're doing it. But we don't think about. We're not conscious of the very thing we want to leave behind because the, the the real truth is at all we're all going to pass away from this earth. No facts. But the legacy you leave behind, we 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 kind of we kind of we kind of curate that, right? Mm-hmm. So what legacy you want to leave behind for just Khalil and for everything connect to you, brother? I know it's a question, right? <laughs> More than anything, human understanding. Woo! Like a lot of my work goes around like our ideals of of love of family of of trauma resilience Mm. of of loving life for what it is like every day not great bro i'm not gonna lie to you as an artist as a person who is always in front of people like we can we can fake wear this mask and and everything be great Mm -hmm. on the camera but like being able to understand that this this is a full human experience i think i think that's what i want because throughout the workshops, bro, when I'm doing workshops mm-hmm. with, with strangers and we was working with a mom like sometime last year and she was like, man, they ain't wrote since I was in like 10th grade for mm-hmm. real. But to see her take a minute and write with her daughters and stuff, that was like in her to be joyful about mm-hmm. it. It's like, I'm actually going to keep writing. 
that is that type of thing. That's dope, bro. That's like it's so many of us who who pass each other by on a daily basis, and we don't talk to strangers no more. We don't do none of that. And I think that's the beauty of poetry. That's the beauty of documentation. That's the beauty of um, just overall mm. thought provoking conversation. It's the fact that um, we can find each other in our humanity for real. So through <laughs> through all of it. <laughs> I was saying in the whole episode. I said, bro, you know, you know your phone. You was, you, you was dropping them gems out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that, man. But through all of it, through all of it, I want to leave a conversation yeah. of, of what can you do for, for the next person? Mm. Um, what can you do for yourself? Yeah, but like, what can you do to leave your legacy? Um, That's so good. Because we we all chasing bread. We chasing, you know, security. Um, and a lot of us call ourselves chasing purpose. But, like, what what is going to be your staple? And I think my staple is to help other people find their staple. For real. So, yeah. Listen, and you know what, what, what curated that question, bro? I was watching the episode. No, I watched, I watched an interview about Nancy Hustle, bro. Mm-hmm. And they asked him that, some to that effect. And man, when I look back at his life, when he asked that question, he exceeded what he said he wanted mm. to do, bro. And we don't look back at his interview, interview not before, not after you passed away, we're gonna look back at his episode mm. and be like, man, Cleo did that joint right there. For sure. That's, that's my goal, man. That's, that's dope, goal. bro. That's I cool. appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me on. No, 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 no,
sitting in their solitude and not really enjoying the fruits of their labor mm. because they don't want to, you know, put their pride aside and say, you know what, I'm going to try this out or I'm mm-hmm. going to do something else different. So enjoying your journey means enjoying the people around you too. Bro, I got a person to say. 215. 250 episodes. This, this has been a real pleasure, brother. I gotta Thank tell you, you, you know what I'm Thank saying? Like you, you are like I, I knew you were smart and I knew you, you know what I'm saying, you were wise, bro, but I didn't know that you stand up at all. So I'm real grateful <laughs> for this interview. Really Thank I Thank you, know, man. Bro. I appreciate that. No, man. absolutely, bro. We gotta do part two. We gotta do part two. We have to go uh, meet you at, uh when, when we do your workshops and like that. Yeah, we'll you gotta come out. kick it. Yeah, yeah we're gonna make that out. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get my happen. get my uh poet on or whatnot. Absolutely. Yeah, come, <laughs> come kick it, come kick it, man. Come kick it. And I feel like this is the most important question of the whole episode, <laughs> man. Where can people learn more about you? Where can they support you? Where can mm-hmm. they get more of your poetry, bro? Absolutely. So y'all can tap in with me personally um, through my website, justcause902.com. That's J-U-S-T-C-O-S 902.com um, and www, of course. Um, <laughs> tap in with me on Instagram at um, j-u-s-t.c.o.s. And then for everything else that I'm involved in, follow the Sparrows Fortune. So T H E S P A R R O W S F O R T U N E. I think I know how to spell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the Sparrows Fortune. Mm-hmm. That's our um, Instagram. You can follow us on um, TikTok. The same thing on um, our website is thesparrowsfortune.com. And last but not least, definitely tap in with Poetry Unplugged, gang. Mm-hmm. If you are hip to any open open mics, you might as well be hip to Poetry Unplugged. Mm-hmm. It's an excellent space for you as an artist to come share your work. We got poets, we got R&B singers, we got rappers, we got comedians, all of that. Come kick it with us. Um, we got shows monthly and we celebrate y'all as an artist. Um, and that's poetry.unplugged on Instagram. You can get on our website, www.poetryunplugged.co. That's C O, not C O M, C O. Um, and if you really, really want to, we just put it up, Healing in the Hood doc. Um, oh, and know. that's um, the doc. Is it that exclusive right there? Oh, shoot, that's yeah, exclusive right yeah, there. Yeah, mad, mad exclusive. Okay, actually. that was up. That was up. Okay. Healing in the Hood Listen, doc. That's dope. So, um, I think I think I said it all, man. Well, yeah, listen, for the people who are lazy and the people who can't spell, it will be in the show notes. So as you watch the episode, sure. right bottom, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Listen, tap it, okay? Yeah. Listen, bro, we, we appreciate you so much. And um, as y'all know, we got to pay some bills real quick. Guys, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you have it, if you are, Khalil, what are you doing June 22nd, my friend? June 22nd, I think I got um, Poetry Unplugged. We're going to be at uh, new, okay. new Voices of Reproductive Justice from 2 to 3. It's gonna be a uh, perfect then. <laughs> it's gonna be an open mic. We gotta pop up open mic on that day. Okay, okay. So a little bit later on that evening, uh, re- uh, the Pink and Black Honors. We will be at Severance Hall. Okay. If you are a person in the city of Cleveland that looking for a gala or a celebration, we might pull up for real. You, you got to, bro. You got That's to. That's how I You got to because it's gonna be it's gonna be entrepreneurs, innovators. Uh, KS- KRS One is gonna be there. The chief and editor of Essence Magazine is gonna mm. be there. It's going to be. A phenomenal, phenomenal uh, spotlight of those who are doing the great things in our city that are getting recognition they they they, they deserve. They're like me, me and Khalil over here. Okay, Absolutely. Uh, if you haven't, get your tickets now. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been honored with the nomination of Entrepreneur of the Year. So, guys, congratulations, man! No, thank, that's thank, exciting, thank, dude. thank, thank, thank you, brother. Wow. And that's yeah. why I want to encourage everyone to be there because once again, it's going to be this a spotlight of us, of us, and I say us as Black and Brown people. So please get your tickets, okay? Uh, next up, guys, uh, June 9th. June 9th, guys, we are going to have a discussion. Me and Kula had an off, 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 uh, off-camera yeah. discussion <laughs> about this very thing. We talk about love, entrepreneurship, and relationships, how they're not mutually exclusive because who you are with makes you, can take your business. It can either damage your business yeah. or or up your business. All about that. And we got man Philly Wee. He's going to y'all. Y'all been asking for it. We we like Philly. Come on, do your thing. You talk relationships all the time. Let's talk about it or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So if you have any ticket, the link will be in the bio. We'll get the ticket, guys. Gonna go on real fast. Mm-hmm. So that will be June 9th at the Four Beach or Workout Street from right here from the winery today. Uh, June 9th at 3 p.m. Okay, so get the tickets. Uh, next up, guys. Uh, Brittany's not here, but she's on vacation. I, I we listen. I'll be giving vacations, you okay. <laughs> Bring it out here, but listen, as you support us, support her amazing platform, her amazing podcast, which is Beauty Be Told, okay? She talks about relationships, talk about finance, talk about everything in between. She, she talks about her own personal experiences, so you learn from 
and you know grow from them and whatnot. So as you guys support us, make sure you support her. Guys, uh, I want to thank the team. Uh, Steve had listen. Steve had to go. Uh, Bree had to go. Everywhere I get everybody vacation. I said y'all take time off. I'm gonna keep it rocking and whatnot. <laughs> but uh, shout out to the team. So listen, if you want to look for photography, look, uh, check out Steve and Bree. If you guys want a business strategist, check out Marquita. If you guys want some great wine, check out Nakia Two You Wines. Uh, also, you guys looking for a virtual assistant? Check out Michelle. Okay. Uh, I think I said everything, guys. I want to thank you mostly, the person watching, the person okay. listening, because as I speak of right now, we are 7.6 million views, uh, 15,000 subscribers, and it keeps growing. And, Excellent. And when I tell you guys, I don't take it for granted because y'all are letting us know y'all want to hear great stories like Khalil's. Y'all want to hear great stories like the amazing 250, 250 episodes. Come on, guys. Yeah. And we're, and we're not stopping. <laughs> as we're not stopping anytime soon. And I just thank God for it. So guys, listen, I just want to thank you, especially because you guys are what makes this thing grow. So uh, we can't thank y'all enough. So we just want to thank once again, Khalil coming on today. And uh, guys- I'll we'll see y'all see- soon, man. Yeah, we'll see you, see you soon. We'll see y'all soon. Uh, 2050 episodes, y'all. So we'll see y'all next time. Peace.